Okay. Would you ever, and this is a legit question, of course, would you ever give a six, you, you, your six years old daughter to marry a 30, 40 years old man? Actually, this is uh, probably the biggest part of Islam that keeps me. No, 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 no. Uh, well, the answer is no. Well, listen, I will actually show you why and what I mean by this. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring Aisha and Muhammad. No, 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 no. This is not my point, by the way. Just, just to let you know. Okay. But would you ever give your six years old daughter, or you know what, nine years old daughter? No. You would not, right? No. Okay. Do you think the ones who have not reached the EU's administration are qualified to get married or to be entered upon? No. And that will be disgusting, right? Yeah. Correct, right, sis? Yes. Yep. Awesome. According to Surat 65.4, it gives you three categories. And I can show you on the screen, by the way. Let me go ahead and open it. And we'll go to the scholars, we'll go to whatever you want. By the way, this Shia believes in this, and Sunnis, both of them, same thing. And I'll tell you. Now, 65.4 gives you three categories. It talks about uh, females, three type of females. It's, uh, okay, the first one, it talks about the ones who are already past the years of administration. Due to their what? Due to their older age. And their edda is three months. All of these three type of females have added up to three months. Now I'll tell you what the add means later. The second category is talking about the ones who have not reached the user administration. Who are the ones who have not reached the user administration, sis? Children. Exactly. So and 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 it continues and it says, okay, their adda is three months. Then the third category is talking about the pregnant ones, their waiting period ends with delivery. Now, this surah specifically is surah al-talaq. What does it mean surah al-talaq? Divorce. Now, how can you get divorced if you don't get married, correct? Right. You're going to have to get married for you to, to get divorced. So this is talking about the ones that are married already. Now, what is the adda? Because all of these have adda up to three months. Let's establish and see what the adda means. If we go to 3349, and this is what it says. Let me just bring it up. We're going to establish in what the adda means. The adda, let me just give a quick explanation. Then I'll read this from the Quran. We'll let the Quran speak itself. The adda is to check and see if she's pregnant. Okay, you're gonna, or you, you know, the idea is to wait three months for you to get divorced. Why do I say that? In case if she's pregnant. Okay. okay. Now, 3349 says, Oh, you have believed. When you marry a believing woman, then divorce them before you have touched them. Then there is not for you any waiting period to count concerning them. That means if you don't touch them, if you don't do sexual intercourse, they will have no adda. Exactly, right, sis? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, 65.4 gives you three type of females, like I explained earlier. And it's talking about the ones who have not reached the age administration, which is children ones. They have adda up to three months. And this sort is talking about sort of talaq, which is divorce. That means they have gotten married and entered upon and done a sexual intercourse for them to have a up to three months, correct? It sounds like it, yeah. Yes. Now let's see what the scholar says. If we go, for example, to Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, for example, <coughs> Ibn Kathir says, Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause. And that is the ones menstruation has stopped due to her older age. This is the first category. Her adda is three months instead of three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah. See, two, 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 two. The same for the young. This is the same, uh, second category. The same for the young who have not reached the administration. 
very good is three months like those in menopause you know what let me show you in the screen sis it's better for you so that way you can see you know from uh, in front of your eyes i don't have to make this up i this have the, the clear quran that i've been reading it yeah um, let me show you let, yes, let me show you this is quran.com 65.4 correct yeah. there we go now where are we at tafsir of ibn kathir so the same one that i actually explained earlier this is Ibn Kathir given his. What does it say? Like I was reading, clarifies the waiting period, then it goes down all the way. What does it say? Same for the young who have not reached the administration. Their adda is three months like those in menopause, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, let me show you the other ayah, which is 3349, which I was reading earlier, but I want to show it to you so that we can see in front of you. It says, oh, I've believed when you marry a believing woman and then divorce them before you have touched them, which is what, uh, what is it? Consummated the marriage. Then there is no waiting period. There's not for you any waiting period to count concerning them. So as long as you don't do sexual intercourse, they will have no idda up to three months. Do you see what so I'm saying? It's a contradiction. You see what I'm saying, sis? No, it's not about that it's a contradiction. It's just about them, you know, uh, that they allow them to have a sexual intercourse with the pew pew best in. Right. Okay. Now, now this is the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Now, we could go to the Jalalain, the tafsir of Jalalain. We could go to many scholars. Matter of fact, let me show you more scholars. Can I ask you a question? Of course, it's good. Okay. Okay. So, um, so far, like what you're presenting, I. I understand and I agree that this is, it's, it's unimaginable almost. Um, so when you say Islam is false, does that mean that you don't believe that those are God or Allah's words? Yes, to I don't prophet? believe that these words are from the true living. And this is, well, this is one of the main reasons why I don't believe in that. Now, let me ask you another question. And I'll tell you, I'll give you another reason why I don't believe in this. Now, do you believe that God is good? I don't know. I mean... No, 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 no. Like, like just in general, you don't even have to tell me. Just, just by thinking about it. Just by, you know, it's common sense. You believe that God is good. God, you know, God is perfect, right? I have a hard time to say perfect. Okay. Well, okay. Based, okay. Based upon the Muslims, that what they believe, they, right. they say that God is good, right? God is perfect. Correct. Correct. They say he makes no mistakes, yeah. right? He makes no mistakes. Exactly. So that means he does not participate in any evilness. Correct. I mean, according to them, they will say he does not participate in evilness. But now let me show you something. This is a clear contradiction in their Quran, by the way. You know, and I've debated many of them. Surah Maryam 83 says, oh, Do you, O Prophet, now see that we have sent the devils against the disbelievers, constantly incited them? If the Quran is uncreated and eternal, okay, that means that this verse still applies until forever and ever. Because this is what it means to be an eternal. It's forever and ever. So if Allah keeps sending the devils against the disbelievers to mislead them but not to guide them, Okay, then Allah Himself being the boss of devils, how can you how can I trust in this book? Right. You know, this is this is the second reason, by the way. Okay, I could give you plenty, plenty of reasons, by the way. This book is not from the true living God. It cannot be. You right. know what I mean? Um yeah, I do. I have listened to so many people speak on these topics and, yeah. um, you know, say all different types of things to, I don't know, justify or try to explain or, or this or that. And it's really, um, there's so but much... logically speaking, Jazalyn, okay, we do have a brain to think and use common sense, correct, sis? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we could differ between if this is true or false right yeah. this is why we have a brain to use not to follow something blindly and not put it into a test correct right exactly so for example let me ask you a question would you ever trust a prophet that has been bewitched for six months 
trust his message? You said bewitched. Bewitched, that means that demonic spirit has been controlled. You know, the demonic spirit is in him and, and he's been controlled by, by the devil for six months. Would you ever trust a prophet like that? No. Exactly. Muhammad was bewitched for six months and he was controlled by the demonic spirit. For example, let me bring on one hadith and I'll show you <clears throat> what the hadith says. Now, if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, now we, we, we could go to Muslim, we could go to Bukhari, we could go to, you know what I mean? There's plenty of hadith that I could bring into the table. But I mean, let's, let's go to Sahih al-Bukhari. Umm al-Mu'minin herself, narrated by Aisha herself, says this. In Sahih al-Bukhari 57-65. This is the reference for the ones that, you know, wonder which one is it. Magic was worked on Allah's messenger. Excuse me. That he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives while he actually had not. Sufyan said, that is the hardest kind of magic as it has such an effect. Now, if we come into a conclusion and we look, for example, we go deep with Sahih al-Bukhari saying, and what is what other books say from Ahl al-Sunnah al-Jama'ah, this magic is a demonic spirit. Where does it come from? It comes from a shaitan. Okay. This magic was worked on the Prophet and he was bewitched for six months. Okay. Where the Quran says that Allah will protect his Prophet from any harm. This is a clear contradiction, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, sorry, I, I, I received a phone call. Second of all, I cannot trust a prophet that has been bewitched for six months because there's no way. Correct? Yeah. This is this is another reason why I don't believe in Islam. Yeah. Okay, there's plenty of reasons, by the way. I guess if I were to contribute anything, um, is that this is something that I really do grapple with because there are so many things that I find so beautiful and healing um, as far as life's, you know, the, the guides on how to be a good person and, and these supposed, you know, the, the, the blueprint on how to be good. And then there's that. And it just darkens the whole thing and then leads me to this thought that perhaps it is very much made up. Right. Right. So, sis, you know, there's plenty of reasons why I cannot believe in this Quran. There's another reason why I say this now. Would you ever, okay, would you ever be okay if a book says that if you change your religion, you will be analyzed? No, that's crazy. Let me show you. Let me yes. show you where it says, I, according to Islam. I've seen it, yeah. I've come up against some of these same things. Um, Yep, it says, Sunan al Nisa 4059 says, Ibn Abbas, the Messenger of Allah, saw and said, Whoever changes his religion, analyze him. Another word, kill him. Yeah, that's crazy. This is another thing. Now they have something which is Sharia law. They follow the Sharia law and they have uh, uh, jihad fi sabilillah for the cause of Allah. For example, if I take you to Surat, I'll tell you what I mean by this. If I can take it sort of Toba 111, now you'll see what, it, what the jihad is. Nine, sort of Toba 111 says, Surely Allah has purchased of the believers their, their, their lives and their belongings, and in return has promised that they shall have paradise. They fight in the way of Allah and slay and are slain. That means they analyze and to be analyzed. 
It actually Thank just you. reminds me of propaganda. Exactly. So it says, such as the promise he has made incumbent upon himself. So here he's saying, you know, that Allah has purchased their life in exchange to have a paradise. So that means if one of them goes and, 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 and analyze someone for the cause of Allah, he will earn paradise. You, you know, you see what I'm, what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. So how can I even believe in this book? Why do you think that women, mothers, um, can move past this? I'm sorry? Why do you think that Muslim women, mothers, can move past this piece of, like, the children? Because they don't know. A lot of them don't know. They don't even read their Quran. I could tell you 70% of them does not even open up their Quran. They don't even know anything about their Quran. All they do is pray. Okay? Uh, they don't know. But trust me, Jessalyn. But don't they find out in, in life and the people that the families and friends and culture, don't they find out that that's how um, some no, people are operating? Some of them does know. Most of them don't know. Some of them, they know, they know about it, but they still do it and they don't even care. They sell their daughter or child, you know, uh, for some money because that's what the Prophet did back then. He used to capture slaves and sell them, for example, you know, uh, to, to actually others. It was a market, okay? Most of them don't know about this. Why? Because they don't, they don't even read. They don't even care. That's that. Now, would you ever be okay for a husband to beat his wife? No. Exactly. That, that's another thing. Surah 434 says is to beat their wives. This is the word in Arabic. Okay, that's one. Would you ever be okay? You be, you know, you, they compare you with animals, with like, for example, duck and donkey? Um, like, I, women are compared with dog and donkeys. Are you okay with that? I mean, I think animals are some of the highest creatures on no, the I'm planet. But, so, but, but the no, off. but no, I don't want to be exactly. compared to a donkey. Exactly. We love the animals, don't we me wrong? But, but, I mean, we can be compared to them, right? So now, let me show yeah. you how these words says. Let me show you what we're, we're in the Sunnah says that they are, you know, uh, women's and, and they are compared to a donkey and dog. Watch. All right. Sahih al-Bukhari. 514, 514 for the ones. Narrated by Aisha, Aisha herself. The things which in all prayer were mentioned before me. And those were dog, a donkey, and a woman. I said, oh, you have compared us women to our dogs. I mean, donkeys and dogs. By Allah, I saw the Prophet praying while I used to lie in my bed between him and the Qubla. Whenever I was in need of something, I disliked to sit in trouble. The prophet so i will slip away by the side of his feet mm -hmm. so they were compared to the you know dogs and donkeys now how can you even believe in this uh, religion it says you know the women are not even honored right um, you know at all uh this book is a demonic book right I mean, how can you even uh, trust it? You can. You can't trust it at all. Do you, you think? Do you think that there are people who are Muslim who practice Islam, but they don't go by? Hmm. There is. There is. Yeah. 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 Of course, there is Muslims that knows. But they don't go about it. Why do I say that? Because of the law that they live in. For example, they live in USA. They're going to have to obey the law, correct? So they can. 
There is Muslims that I have seen, I have actually spoken with. They said, yes, it's okay. That's fine. Uh, we actually agree with the child to get married. But the problem is we can't because of the law. Right. So there, there is a lot of them. Just, yeah, I, I think uh, the books are all very um, suspect. Uh, to uh, to being, you know, written by men who were caught up in religious, spiritual, political wars. I don't know. Because right. it sounds all good and beautiful, and then you'll come across something that is completely violent or morally corrupt, and it's confusing. Because how could right. you, you know, have such a beautiful perspective about the world on one page and then a couple pages later in different books, you know, let's say the Bible, too. There are some things in there that are almost makes you think, is God, is he, is he, is he, is he I understand free will, but like, are you... It's what do you think about God and what, sister? For example, like, let's say the Bible. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, to be honest, I've actually never read it, but um, exactly. I do think there are let some me, things. Let me actually read you something. Hold on. Let me actually read you something from the Bible and tell me if this looks the same as the Quran. And matter of fact, I'm actually making this challenge to, to, to the Muslims as well. Muslims. Show me one ayah in the Quran says, where Allah says to love your enemy and to love each other. If he's based on love. Is, is, is this a good deal, right, sis? Am I giving a good challenge? Yeah, I would assume exactly. that there was something somewhere that okay. talked now, about. Now, let me take you what the Bible says. Watch. Matthew 5. I'm going to take you to Matthew 5 and I'll read to you what it says. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just uh, hold on. Okay, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst of righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall ob obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they reveal revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be extendingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you then it continues it says, believers are the salt and light, by the way. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its, its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under basket but on a lampstand and it gives a light to all who are in the house let your light so shine before a man that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven now i could go on and on as well you know yeah this is this is the love that we're talking about because our god loved us before we even get to think about loving him you know do you believe in any of the prophets? Of course, I believe. Like, what do you mean? For, uh, of course, we believe in all the prophets. I mean, besides Muhammad, of course, because we don't believe that he's a prophet. We believe he's a 
He's an antichrist. He's a false prophet, of course, because the last prophet was the John of the Baptist, John of the Baptist. Okay, so interesting. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, um, I understand. Let me, give you, let me give you a prophecy. Let me give you a prophecy before before Jesus even walked this earth. Walked this, and we're talking about in between 700 to a thousand years before even Jesus came into this earth. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go to Isaiah 53, okay, we come to Isaiah 53, and I'll go ahead and read it for you. It says, uh, okay, um, okay, I'll read it from here. It says, people did not respect him. They refused to accept him. He was a man who received much pain. He knew what it felt like to be weak and all. Oh, People did not even want to look at him. They did not respect him. We decided that he was a worth nothing, but he took away all our weakness. He carried our pain for us. We thought that he was receiving punishment for his own sins. We thought that God was causing him to suffer, but it was our sins that caused his wounds. The bad things that we had done crushed him. The punishment that he received, that he has brought us peace to us. The ones that has that he received had made us well. Who do you think that this is talking about? I'm not sure. Muhammad. This is talking about Christ. Oh. Jesus Christ, when he came and he took upon the sins of all mankind and he buried it he bore all of these sins into the cross where he was crucified and died and resurrected this is a prophecy that was written 700 to a thousand years before christ and it was already fulfilled by christ him coming to this earth and humble and obviously humble himself for all of us because we know for a fact that the, that, the, that the consequences of a sin is death. Now, because of Adam and Eve, the, or, the original sin corrupted the nature, entered this earth. It, we got separated from God. You know... For us to be back with God, there has to be a sacrifice, just like in the Old Testament. You know, someone needs to pay for that debt. Someone needs to pay that debt. And who's going to do it? God, which is Christ himself, chose the best way to humble himself. The Word became a flesh, which he took the form of a flesh came down humbled himself he walked this earth he taught us and he was crucified then he died and resurrect for all of us for our sins he shed his blood for all of us so we can have an everlasting life and a salvation of course this is the love that we're talking about sis not the Quran where it says Allah is the most prideful one of Allah's attributes al mutakabbar which is prideful Right. Or, for example, Allah is the one that hates the disbelievers. Now, if you're not a believer, He loves you. But if you're a disbeliever, He hates you. And He sends devils against you to mislead you, but not to guide you. How can I even trust that God? What kind of God is that for me to trust Him? Okay. God needs to be just. And He, he needs to be perfect. He has to be just and perfect as well. And the only true living God is Yahweh. Because we are, he, he, I mean, imagine God. You know, we don't, I mean, even, 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 for example, if we don't even get to love him, for example, like if a disbeliever, he still loves him. He's still knocking on the door for you or for anybody else to come in and then open that door so he can enter. What does it mean to enter? Obviously, to enter 
inside of your heart. Because he, obviously he cares about us. This is the reason why, you know, he came to this. He, he took upon the, uh, okay, uh, the, uh, what's it called? The human nature. If he didn't care about us, he could have just wiped us all out. Who cares? But he he did that once, him. right? Well, he did it in the Old Testament, yes, but why? He was what, dissatisfied was with us? Because of the sins. Because of the sin. Right. That this, that this group, because, you know, uh, the what's it called? The Jews are the favorite of God, right? They're the favorite pe pe people of God. I don't know if I, you know. And I'll tell you. I'll actually explain to you. There's another group that came, okay, and took and captured the women of Israel, like the Jews. They slaved them. They had a sexual intercourse. They did everything with them. So God gave them all multiple chances to pl repent stop repent how many times does god wants to give them warning he gives them he gave them many warnings they still disobeyed him and god said okay you got it he did it one time he wiped them one time okay but then you know, Jesus came, but then he said, no, that's it. That will be the one, and I'm not going to even do it again. This is why Christ himself came down on this earth to save us and to bring this back. This whole, just listening to you talk and the whole Jessalyn, topic. You need, to, it, you need to actually read the Bible. You're going to, trust me, you're going you're gonna to understand what I'm actually talking about. I'm just giving you like, you know what I mean? Like a little bit of it, okay? I'm actually trying to show you, that's all. But if you're gonna start reading, you'll actually understand what I'm actually talking about. And I know that I do want to, when I'm done reading what I'm reading now, what I told yeah. you, I am interested in looking. And also I come with the um, understanding that the Bible, has been manipulated by man many, many times over the course of history, maybe a little bit here and there to suit the what preferences. What do you mean by like manipulate? Like what do you like mean? Change, like maybe like things left out I've heard or... What, what makes you think that it has been changed based on what? What evidence? Based on what I don't, I don't have done. any, it's just like a preconceived notion that I've picked up on by listening to all people. Of course, they're going to tell you that it has been changed, but guess what? They can't even prove that. Do you know why? So here's a, here's a thing, Jaslyn, when they, when they ask us this question, for example, and I'll give you the argument, by the way, two arguments that I could give. One of the arguments that I could, you know, uh, you know, demonstrate to them and show them, you know what? No, 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 it has not been corrupted, you know, and I'll show them even within their own Quran, their own book confirms the previous scriptures to be inauthentic, but not to be corrupted because it's according to them that the Bible is the word of God. For example, the Injil and the Torah is the word of God. The word of God cannot be corrupted, right? Whoa. Because this is what Allah says, according to the Quran, it says, you know, his words cannot be corrupted in any shape or way, or otherwise he's a weak God. Now, but this is one of them. The second that, thing that I could go with them is, if they're going to say, you know what, no, it's been corrupted, then I'll ask them this question. What is the NG? Where is it at? Where is it at? Tell us. You can't, we can't find it anywhere. Because they have nothing to prove and to show. All they do is make claims based on their own ignorance. That's all. Okay. I have actually done a session regarding this where I actually, you know, done a topic where it says Quran affirms the Bible to be an authentic and not to be corrupted. Yeah. That's one of them. I'm talking about it regarding the Islamic perspective. Now, if we're going to come in Christianity, of course, we have manuscripts. Guys, do not invite anybody until I said so, please. Okay. Until I bring them. I will actually bring them up 
I can provide evidence. All right, come back, Omar. Once I'm done with the system, then you're more than welcome to come back. Okay, stay here. I'll actually bring you back once I'm done. Yes. For example, we have church fathers that affirms and, and you know, uh, uh, they quote the whole gospel. We have a Septuagint. Okay, we have manuscripts. We have everything that we can back up what we have. Okay, we have 2,000 years of a, of a church history. Okay, we have apostolic succession. It's called apostolic succession, which is a successors, like a chain of narration that chased back. We have Polycarp. Polycarp is the student of John Beloved, Ignatius. It's, all of them are within the first century. Okay, we have everything to prove this. We don't, I mean, we don't even have to hide or anything like that. We have everything to prove that the Bible is the same Bible that we have. Now, if they're gonna start to make the claim again, for example, if they're gonna start to make the claim of, well, you know what, the Injil and the Torah is corrupted, Muslims, then the Quran is preserved. Then here's the question. Are you saying that Allah gave the Torah to Moses, but then it got corrupted? Then he gave the Injil to Isa, which is Jesus, they claim, and it got corrupted. Then he gave the Quran to Muhammad, but then he preserved it? Wait, so he allowed his books to be corrupted two times, but then he protected the Quran itself? You see, you see, you see what I'm talking about? I see, I see what you are, I see your point. Um, I have a question for you. Um, yes. So, I wonder, so in the Bible where, um, or I don't even know if it's in the Bible, but in religious history, when they talk about how, was it Abraham who was asked by God to kill one of his sons? Okay. Do, do I have that right? Okay. Okay. What is uh, would God would would God was that a test, and then he did not actually let he it happen? He yeah, he actually sacrificed his uh, one of his son. Yeah, because okay. God wanted to test and see his uh, his faith. Did he fail that test? No, he did not. But, but did he? Why would God he want actually that? sacrifice his uh, his son? Because, because Is you're there not that forced to another love. way, another way to prove. No, what no, and I'll tell you why. Because, because you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to, okay, uh, love your brothers and sisters more than God, right? Correct. You're supposed to love God and do his will and not our, our will. Right. Okay. So out of, out of just a test, to test his faith, okay, uh, uh, this is what he did. But, but then wait a minute. If we're gonna have to go and regarding this perspective, then guess what? According to the Quran, the flood of Noah. Why did God wipe all of the people, including children? Or for example, uh, according to an authentic hadith where it says, that you know the prophet muhammad he went during the the raid night he went and analyzed all the children and the and the women of the polytheists do you think this is just no exactly so uh, you know uh yeah <sighs> yeah it, um... so, so all I'm asking says is, is, you know, let's use wisdom, mm -hmm. be wise on what we do. Okay. I... And I'm actually, uh, what's it called? I recommend you to read the Bible, you know, please read, you know what, read the Bible and read the Quran, both of them. Where would, you... Be dead serious. Read would, the Bible you... and read the Quran. would you say to start at the Old Testament or the New Testament? 
Well, I would say start within the New Testament, then you could go to the Old Testament. Why do I say that? So you could learn about Christ and what the, uh, you know, uh, pick back on Christ and learn about him before you go to the Old Testament. Now, if I would pick which one, which gospel, I would say read gospel, whether you want to read John or Matthew, you know, both of them are amazing. You could start from there. And once you're done, you could go to Genesis, yeah. where from Genesis all the way to, you know, Revelation. I, um, I have thought before, okay, let's say, you know, um, Jesus was, I think there's a story similar. Let's say he was, you know, uh, doing his carpentry out in nature and he came across a very young girl that, was unattended maybe didn't have a uh, orphan and i think what, Wait, what are you talking about I'm not just, talking yeah about yeah it. just hear me out for a second so i'm saying that i have had the thought that um in you know uh the case that jesus were to come across you know a child um and she was alone and Maybe but lost, Jesus never did hungry. That, so no, 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 I didn't finish. No, no, hear me yeah, out. Yeah. Hear me out. No, no, no. No, no, I'm not. Because listen to me. No, but it, you're, 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 you're assuming you know what I'm, what I'm going to say. I, I, but sister. I, what I was going to say is he would be good. He would feed. He would care. He would be proper and decent. And then when I read about Prophet Muhammad, I don't feel the same. I when I read about all the ways that Jesus behaved to teach people, it touches me. It's beautiful. But when I read about the other prophet, I don't like so much stuff that I hear. And it prevents me from um, being able to yeah, right. For example, that, you know, Muhammad married Aisha at six years old. He consummated his marriage at a nine years old, even though that she have not reached the years of ministration, which is pu puberty. That's that. Uh, would you ever be OK with that, even if it was back then? No, of course. I'm now, do you know what Jesus said in the Bible? And this is before Muhammad, uh, that she was 12 years old. I'm what talking about 12 years old, by the way, sister. Look yeah. at what, what Jesus called them. What Watch. Is that? I'll tell you. Watch. Watch Talitha. Watch Talitha. Qumi. Let me show you. Let me show you how old she was when, G uh, when Jesus told her to wake up. She was Mark five forty one. It says. Let me just uh, one second. I'm sorry. Ah taking her by the hand, and he said to her, Talitha, kumi, which means a little girl, I say to you, arise. And she was, how old was she was? She was 12 years old. Jesus called on her a little child, and this was before even Muhammad existed. You see, you see, you see what I'm saying? So Jesus, from this side, before even Muhammad existed, he's telling her, Talitha, Kumi, okay, which is wake up. And, he, and he's calling her a little girl when she was what? She was at 12 years old. But then after that, we have Muhammad marrying Aisha at six years old, consummating his marriage when she was nine years old, when she had not reached the years of administration. You see the differences? Yeah, very much. Yeah, very much. So when I asked you originally why you were saying this, it's not necessarily because I disagree. I I don't know where I stand sometimes because yeah. I'm confused about all of it. But Let me show I you think... something else. It's okay. Let me show you some, something else in the Quran. Now, what are the women in the Jannah? What is their job? Do you know? Do you have an idea? When they go to Jannah? I'm sorry, repeat the question. 
what are the women's in the Jannah? For example, in the, according to Islam, what are the women's in the Jannah if they make it to Jannah? I'll tell you what, what are they. 56, 37. Let me give you this. Let me show you what the women's are in the Jannah. And I'll, I'll, I'll go to the gospel, of course, because I love the gospel. 56, 37, according to the Quran, Ruriban Ataraba. We go to Tafsir of Ibn Kathir himself. We come all the way down. This is his Tafsir, by the way. This is one of the giant Mufassir, by the way, according to Alice Sinu Jama'a. Uriban. Shu'aib bin Jubair. That Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is saying this, he's the cousin of the Prophet, that they are in the infatuated state with their husbands. Haven't you ever seen a she camel and he, she's like that? And what does he mean by she camel? Uh, woman. Horny women, she's like that in the Jannah. Now, if you go down, just stay down a little bit. Okay, over here. What is the man is going to have? The man will ha be able to have a sexual intercourse with a hundred virgins in one day. This is in the Jannah. So the women will be used in the Jannah for sexual intercourse. This well, is according what to is Islam. What is the obsession about having sex with a virgin? I mean, gross. As what do you a man, mean? Why would someone be so excited about that? That's gross. Exactly, sister. Exactly. So pretty much, this is the second Las Vegas. Have you? I mean, I'm pretty sure you have. Uh, you have heard of Las Vegas, right? This is the right. second Las Vegas, and the Jannah will be that we have. You know, there we go. Now I could definitely take you to many, by the way, but that's not the point. I, sh I think I've showed you already enough and I brought up evidence. We don't just make claims based on, you know, we bring scholars and what the scholar says first. Now, let me take you to the Bible again, sis, and let me show you what Jesus says. For the ones that wants me to actually read scriptures as well, you guys could go ahead and uh, Christians, you could go ahead and comment here, you know, whatever you want me to read as well for the sister, but I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and read her a couple ones over here. Let me show you John 3.16. Look what John 3.16 says. John 3.16 says, For God... For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that, he, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, have eternal life. Okay? That God, if you believe in Him and you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, okay, you will have everlasting life. This is what, what our God is telling us. Okay, like I said earlier, he even loved us before we even get to think about loving him. What else do we need? I mean, what else? He called us his sons and daughters yeah. instead of him calling us his slaves. Which one right. would you prefer to be called, sister? A slave or a daughter? A daughter. Exactly. You don't want to be called a slave. You want to be called uh, a daughter, right? Yeah. Okay, and this is what our father called us because he is our father. Okay, and he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is saying this. What other prophet have said that I am the way and the truth and the life? You will never ever find anybody. Not even what? nobody. Even, you know what Muhammad said? Muhammad said, they're asking Muhammad, where are you going? He said, I don't even know where I'm going, nor you guys know where you guys are going. A prophet can't even, he doesn't even know where he's going. Right. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Chosen by God? Yes. So, so okay. yeah. So, why do you think that so, I mean, it's a, uh, Islam is a huge religion of the world, and there's so many 
very devoted mm -hmm. um, followers. Why do you think so many people are getting around all of these things that yeah. I agree with you about it? Yeah. Um, is it because the rest, uh, there's so much beauty mixed in with all that? Good question. Garbage. What if I tell you? What if I tell you every single day m m m millions of Muslims are converting to Christianity or become an atheist? For example, Middle East. I'll give you a Middle East perspective of Middle East. You know, they won't give you the numbers, but we can see in the TV and the news and everything. Thousands of them, millions of them are becoming Christian or becoming an atheist in the Middle East itself. Now, if you go to India, we, have, we go to Indone Indone Indonesia, you know, Millions of them are converting to Christianity. Now, let me give you another hadith. I'm just giving you this. You know how they always say, oh, the most growing religion. No, 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 no. Because if you're going to have to make this argument, then I'll tell you the same thing. Hinduism. Hinduism are, are, are about, what, billion? Does that mean that they're true? No, we don't no. go based on the number system. But now let, let me show you something that is very interesting within their own books. Sahih Muslim. 146. Verily, Islam started as something strange and it Sorry, hold on. It would. Ah, uh, man, my hand is clicking on something. It would again revert to its old position of being strange. So it started something strange, then it would end as a strange, just as it started. And it would recede between the two mosques, just as the serpent crawls back into its hole. Their own religion is saying this. Their own hadith is saying this, that it will go back to its hole, where it belongs to. So what kind of a, a grown religion is this? You know, with all due respect to any Muslim, when they come and make this claim, we have the most grown religion, just because, for you know what, let me give them the benefit of the doubt. For example, which Christianity is still bigger than Islam, For okay? But let me give them the benefit of that. Let me take them to this route. If your religion is the most uh, grown religion, does that mean that you have the truth? No, cults grow. Exactly. Cancer exactly. grows. Humanity has grown. Exactly. And another thing, sister, how many wives are they allowed to marry? Four or seven. <coughs> Four. Four. Which us as a Christians, we're allowed to marry only one. Four. Which us as a Christians, we're allowed to marry only one. Four. Which us as a Christians, we're allowed to marry only one. Do you ever, for example, let me just give you this. Would you ever want to be uh, married to a man that has already a wife or that has like three wives? Me personally, no. Exactly. That's another thing. That's another thing that Christianity per prohibits, you know, uh, prohibited it. Okay. God only allows us to marry one woman and to be, and we're actually equal. A man is equal with the woman. They're one, we, you know, we become one flesh, a man and a woman. So if, um, if, if the Quran is supposed to be the direct word of God, um, why doesn't he address that he changed his mind about that? He does. There's a lot of Muslims are becoming Christians every single day. Look at the testimonies. No, no, no. What I mean is if yeah. another prophet came to preach a new word of God that once we were saying one wife and now it's four, when, when did that change happen in God's mind and it's not God's you? mind. First of all, like I said, sister, the Quran is not from the true living God. It was no, amazing. I, I'm book. saying like, you know, yeah. I'm saying it not sarcastically, but I'm saying. Oh, got you, got you. How can he contradict himself by having, by adding another three wives? According to them, right? Is that what you're saying? Right? Yeah, that, that also makes me feel, you know, yes. like, you know, because I, I just was starting to um feel like i was more inclined to try to develop 
my relationship with God. And um, it was actually, um, I have a partner who observed Ramadan for the first time last year. Um, his mom passed away and she was a beautiful Muslim woman and he never was religious. He's not really religious. But I think when she passed, he started to, he said, you know what, my mom would have liked me to pick up the Quran. And then he has a couple of friends that he, and so me being the non-religious person that I've been, um, I very much, uh, I've gone through phases of what I believe, but I just kind of settled on like evolution worked for me. And um, I believe in definitely some sort of very high power and some design, but I, I really have a problem labeling it. But anyway, supporting him through that, you know, in the simple ways I, I said, it was his first time yeah. fasting. So I said, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna support and I'm also gonna learn because I'm a little nervous. I don't know what is gonna happen here. Um, yeah. And then I, I wanted to, you know, keep the clean house, make sure he's eating. And I would listen to new things here and there. And then I started to become very enchanted with so many beautiful things that have actually changed me for the better. Um, for example, a simple thought like when things are going wrong and I think to myself, when people, Muslims say, you know, Allah is the best disposer of affairs, this has helped me immensely when I am not in control of an outcome that I want. And then I submit to, you know what, it's not in my hands. And it's just one small example of some of the changes that started happening for me. But like we talked about, I, I'm bumping up against the same things and it's a little heartbreaking because i just feel like lost like i i don't i want so much to to put my i want to put my things down to god and i i even to to i don't you know i want to have a more um I want to feel like I have a closer relationship to, I like the idea that there is this, you know, this God <laughs> that has, I, but it's heartbreaking because I, I just come back to the same feeling of like, if man was involved, I, it's very hard for me to trust the books. And I don't know anything about, the Torah, and I don't know much about like the the Vedas. Um, Why you need to study, sister? With all the respect, if someone seeks for the truth, as long as you seek for the truth and you humble yourself, you'll find the truth, and this is what matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jesus. There's plenty of miracles that has happened. Not only around thousands, millions of people around the world that has happened with them, even including Muslims. I could bring you a sheikh himself from his word saying that a miracle has happened to his mother when his mother was about to die. A sheikh in Middle East, by the way, is saying this. So is this out of nowhere? No, 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 it's not. And another thing is you need to since you haven't read the Bible, you, you, you need to start reading the Bible. And you're saying that your husband is a Muslim, sure. I mean, bring it to me. We can have a conversation. I'll actually have a dialogue with him. If you wanted it to be in private, I don't mind being in a private either. I have no problem. I'll be more than happy to even ha engage with him and, and do a dialogue with him in private. You know, to show him how Islam is false and it cannot be from the true living God. When I brought up these points to him, I hear him parrot. Um, other things people have told him to justify or reframe the things. How is he going to justify, for example, how is he going to justify a child marriage where they are already been entered upon? Or how can, or how is he going to justify that the prophet that he believes in, that he follows, and he's the best of examples? <clears throat> he entered upon a six years old and consummated the air marriage at a nine. Or how is he going to justify a prophet that he trusts? that he was bewitched for six months and he was controlled by that demonic spirit. How? I don't, how? I don't know how. I, I'm i not sure how firmly he stands by those pieces, but it doesn't make sense then because if you don't accept 
I mean, it's part of the Shahada, right? I, I believe that Prophet Muhammad is, um, I believe that Muhammad is his prophet and... What and is the Shahada, by the way? The Shahada is to bear witness, right? Who, okay. To bear who, witness, to who submit... Who bear witness to? To submit to God. But who is he bearing that witness to? Who is around him being witnessed? To I don't think so. He didn't take it. He was just born into that. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. This mm -hmm. is the sad part. When you're born into a religion that you don't even know anything about, you know, you, you, you're going to come, you're going to have to come. And this is why God actually brought you here. He brought you into this life so I could tell you exactly what Islam teaches and what is it about. Okay, I could give you all of these references, what I've actually read to you and everything, and and uh, <clears throat> and the private. I could send them to you, you could show them to your husband, tell him what do you think of these? What do you yes. think of them? You know? I mean, uh, technically, he... he start reading the Bible, sister. Start reading the Bible and start seeking. If he's back, like, like I said, I mentioned one thing. If you seek for the truth, you'll find it, correct? As long as you seek for it, you'll find it. Yeah. Listen, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to tell you, you know what? No. Look at the Bible and that's it. No, 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 no. Everything that I have actually brought you as in objections and what I showed you, go do your own research and regarding what I showed you today, right now. Yeah. What I showed you, do your own research. I want you to do your own research. I want you to see it in your eyes. You know, and do your own research and see what is it exactly. And if you want any help, I'll be more than happy to send you all of the informations. And you could take them to your husband, tell your husband to go talk to the to the sheikh and see if the sheikh is going to be able to respond to these questions. He won't. What is he going to say? We're not actually married, so that's a little funny too, right? We just... Yeah have lived together for six years, which I know is not allowed, but he was not religious. I feel he's kind of becoming a believer. And I keep saying, but what about this? But what? And, you know, respectfully, he'll try to, like, when you say, how do you justify it? The same way everybody else does when you have these conversations, you hear all different types of things, but just well, none, of, none of it sits right. Yeah, yeah. well, well, if you're going to justify an actions based on morality and you know for a fact that this is wrong, then I'm sorry. You have something in this. You have your mind is not working properly. Right. Looks like you have problems and you have been deceived so bad by the Satan. This is why you affirm it, you know, but I could bet you, I could tell you actually not bet you. I can tell you that many Muslims, the ones that have never seen this, they get shocked by seeing this and they do their own research and like, what? And trust me. Yeah, I mean, the, I would love for you to send specific to things. Right huh? I would love to read and see more specific things and to share. I just tread lightly because I do believe that this for him is possibly a way of coping with his mom's death by taking on some of her, what she believed in, maybe makes him feel closer to her. So I don't want to debate too hard. Um, but it's, it's just an interesting time for me, you know, yeah. because uh, I really didn't know a lot and I've learned a lot in the last year, a lot. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even know even the simplest things because I always just kind of, I mean, I was forced to go to church as a kid and I was grown up, I was brought up in a Lutheran church and I was taught, like I didn't even believe that, that hell and heaven were anything to be much concerned of. And I was listening to something one, one day here recently, it was a Muslim scholar speaking and he was talking about Judgment Day and Jannah and all of a sudden I had this really scary feeling that said, what if I'm wrong? What if this is true? What if? And then I started saying, I need to repent. I a stug for Allah, right? I, I, I want to 
I want to take up accountability for anything I've, I've, that would, if there is such a thing as heaven, right? I didn't really concern myself with that or, or hell. I didn't crave yeah. heaven and I didn't fear hell. I lived in a neutral zone where I was going to be okay. And uh, there was a lot of unknown, but then I started thinking, what if, what if I'm wrong? And then uh, I started listening more and more and it, it's a confusing time for me, but um, I did consider going also, you know, to maybe a church one Sunday and just quietly sitting and observing. I'm so curious about all of this now. And I, um, I am looking for things that feel like truth and, yeah. um, there's a little bit of good in every religion and then in each one too, yeah. I find certain things that make me uncomfortable. Yeah. And then I let think, me, uh, let me go ahead and read this to you, this Bible verse and I'll, uh, and I'll go ahead and, uh, uh, let you go sister. Okay. Let me read you this. And this is what it says. First John four sixteen all the way to 19. It says, so we have come to know and to believe, the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this love perfected with us. So that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts our out fear. For fear has to do with the punishment and whoever fear has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Right. And this is what Christ says. I mean, so yeah. sister, at the end of the day is I would definitely recommend you this to do your own research, to read the Bible and see what the Bible says, compare the Bible with the Quran. And please use wisdom and be wise with yourself. Seek for the truth, like I said, and you'll find it. You know, read the Bible, start with it. You know, look at the Quran, look at the, what the Quran says. Look at the objections that I've actually brought up. Yeah. Okay. Look at the objections, what I've uh, what I've actually brought up in regard to Islamic belief and see what it really teaches. Because I already okay. give you everything. And if you ever need anything, like I said, you could always private message me. I don't mind sending you all of the sources that I showed you on the screen. Okay. okay. I appreciate you speaking with me. Of course. It was my pleasure again talking to you, even me and you. You know, may God bless you. May God, you know, uh, you know, uh, open your heart, you know, uh, show himself, you know, in any way, reveal himself. And I will say this as well. Go inside of your room. Pray to that God. You don't have to. You don't have to call his name but if you want you could call his name that would be even better but but talk to him talk to him yes as long as it's from your bottom heart be like you know uh, talk to the true living god tell him to reveal himself to you mm -hmm. you know yeah and see what happens sister but at the same time read the bible as well i appreciate you Thank My you. Pleasure. God bless you. And I don't know what time it is. If it's at night, have a good night. And uh, don't hesitate to come back again. Okay? okay. Don't be sad. You take good care. Okay. Thanks.